Hey guys, welcome to another episode of What's on the Market. Um, you'll be pleased to know, as you can probably see, the bow tie has been found and has made a return. So Jim O'Neill, you can now uh, rest happily knowing that the bow tie is indeed safe. Uh, and not only have we got the bow tie today, but we've got a fantastic new book uh, that's been out mm, probably a few months now uh, from Warlord Games, uh, and it's called Germany Strikes. Um, it's the early war supplement in the bolt action series. Um, so today we're going to check that out, um, find out what it has in store for us. Um, I'm very excited as a keen early war player um, to see what's in there, to see what I can, uh, what it adds uh, and brings to my game. Um, and hopefully it's going to give me some fantastic new ideas for games uh, between me and my friends. Um, and, and hopefully maybe even for the, the game that I'm, I'm doing for the show in Oklahoma City uh, next year or, or in 2016. So um, before we kind of get into the book, I just wanted to go through uh, some of the products out in the market at the moment. Um, there are tons and I've just got a selection here uh, from my own collection. Um, so we'll just very quickly start off. We'll go. We'll start off on this side. We'll, we'll work our way around. Um, the we'll, let's start off on the top. Let's go with the French. So we've got. Um, I've got a Renault R35 here. Uh, Renault. It's it's a light tank. French light tank. Um, and uh, it's a very nice little uh, little model. I'm not sure how it plays in the game yet, as I haven't had an opportunity. But hopefully. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm having a big game for my birthday. Uh, everything I've got going out on the table, it's going to be Russians and Germans and Japanese versus British, Americans, uh, French. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, so so everything's going on the table, including tons of armor. Um, the French uh, R35, uh, the Renault R35, will be making its debut performance, uh, as well as my uh, German Panzer II, which we'll get onto in just a moment. So there's the French uh, tank. You can also get uh, French infantry sections um, from Warlord. They come in boxes of 10 metal figures, um, of course in 28 mil as always. Um, I have two sections, uh, two squads of, of French uh, infantry. Um, you can also get um, the, the light howitzer, which I've got on the table here um, with its four crew. Um, and, and there's various other elements of the French that you can get, um, special teams, other vehicles, um, of course, French resistance you can get as well, um, and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, obviously, Warlord do great, uh, a great selection um, in a lot of their ranges, uh, but there are also other companies out there um, that are worth looking at. Artisan Designs is, is one that um, uh, does some great figures. Um, uh, the Perrys do some, but I'm not sure they do any early war, um, war uh, World War Two figures. Um, uh, there's a ton out there. Cobblestone uh, do some, um, it, but it's what what the point I'm trying to make, I guess, is to. It's always worth. I mean, if if, if one company doesn't do. Uh, something or doesn't do it quite the way you like it have a look around on the market to see what there is and uh, if this series uh, has a particular message it is that that there is tons out there on the market and it's well worth taking a look before purchasing um, so that's the French moving on we've got the Germans now the, the Warlord have brought out a lot for the early war in terms of the Germans and obviously the Germans being one of the major um, forces within the Second World War, um, they have had a particular uh, a lot of focus. So um, I've actually got two boxes of Blitzkrieg Germans, so I've got sixty guys, uh, which is going to make um, a particularly good force. Um, on top of that, I'm uh, just about to order uh, their early war uh, motorcycle with sidecar and MG uh, thirty four on it. Um, so there's them. Uh, these are the I should probably say these are the Jim Blitzkrieg Infantry. Um, lovely figures, great detail. Um, in my opinion, much, much better than the uh, the first German figures they brought out, which were late war, um, and they were a little bit fiddly. The detail wasn't great, 
but these are absolutely fantastic and of course uh, we've now got the grenadiers out for late war um, which are a step better even, even more so so we've got that we've got plenty of german tanks available uh and, and armored cars uh, this is the the panzer 2 uh but the panzer 1 is available um there is panzer 3s in fact just about any german tank you can think of that was in the early war uh they are there the half track the hanamag the opal blitz truck um 88 mm um flat guns um if you if, if you can think of it it's probably there okay so um in terms of early war germans there is absolutely tons available particularly from warlord um so that's good uh and then moving over to the um to the the british um They've got uh, the British Expeditionary Force and the BEF figures. There's, there's quite a lot um, that Warlord do for those. Um, I've got my officer here. He's a lovely figure. And, and if you've been watching my other series, you'll notice that I've been painting up sections and support teams for them. And, you know, they're great. Um, on top of that, you know, there's the vehicles. You can get the Morris CS9, which I'll be getting. You can get the Bedford trucks again, which I'll be getting. Uh, both a gun, which I'll be getting. 25 pounders. Um, just uh, an absolute ton of different options for the British in the early war period. Uh, you can even get um, uh, British soldiers on bicycles, okay? Because that was commonplace, uh, particularly in the Battle of Belgium and Battle of France. So. Um, so you can get those. Um, you can also get Dad's Army. I mean, fantastic. Who wouldn't want Dad's Army? Um, so if you fancy, maybe you're kind of into the what if history scenarios, like uh, what ha would happen if the Germans, or what would have happened if the Germans had invaded um, England? Uh, would the Home Guard have come into call? Probably. Okay, so... Um, I, I certainly plan to maybe do something like that in the future, especially when I get my hands on some German uh, Falschermäger um, and with my early war infantry as well. That would be great. Um, just a quick point on the Falschermäger. Um, I've been speaking to Andy Singleton, who who's uh, got some uh, some uh, Falschermäger, the the new plastic fashion maker and he was saying that the way it comes is you get your 30 figures but it's split in half so you've got 15 early war uh, kind of uniforms the, the the early smocks uh and then you've got 15 later war now apparently um with fashion maker forces uh the early war uniforms were basically used throughout the war so you can use them in the late period no problems but you can't use the late ones in the early war so I have got a cunning plan to get a couple of boxes uh, and, and put together a, a force of three sections of, um, of Falschermjäger uh, in my early war game. But they would also do absolutely brilliantly for uh, an Invasion of Britain game. Um, so yeah, Dad's Army and, and obviously I could use my BEF forces as well as Extra Home Guard. Um, the great characters uh, in the Dad's Army um, box set really come out uh, and not only do you get them in their military uniforms but you get them in their civilian uniforms as well so you get uh you know absolutely um tons of figures uh what is it 18 figures and and just the character and the oh it's, it's just brilliant just brilliant so um that's a lot of the figures there are um earlier uh, sorry, minor minor nations as well. You can get Polish forces from Warlord. Uh, you can get Belgian forces. Um, there's not a great range at the moment out there for Belgium, and and the, the biggest range is actually Warlord. Um, so people who play Belgium and those uh, other minor countries do a lot of conversions, and I, I will be doing some conversions for the Belgians to build up my force. Um, in other videos and, and, and stay tuned for those um, to see what I do to convert them. Um, looking forward to that. So that's really um, a lot about the range and there is a ton out there. Really, I can't uh, emphasize that enough. There are There is a lot of figures and, and vehicles and guns out there um, if you are into early war. So I think it's time we dive into the book uh, and see what it's got to offer. And uh, yeah, let's check that out now. 
Okay guys, so we've got uh, Germany Strikes, the uh, the early war supplemental uh, in, in the bolt action range, um, as I mentioned. I will just before we go into it, mention that it comes with a free figure if you order it from Warlord, uh, and you get this fantastic uh, Mad Jack Churchill figure. Uh, he's got some bagpipes, a sabre, uh, and uh, I think he's got a pistol as well. Um, he's just a great little character, and, and he will be uh, fantastic to paint up and, and include in any uh, early war British force. So, very good. Germany Strikes. I absolutely love this book. This is fantastic. This is possibly my favourite so far of all the bolt action books I've got. It comes with 16 new scenarios for early war play. And that's just absolutely fantastic. I mean, you have the 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 the, the general six scenarios in the main rule book, um, and of course some of the the new. Um, in fact, I think each of the new supplements, um, the theater selected, sorry, the theater books. Um, so like Ostfront and uh, Battleground Europe, they come with scenarios. But sixteen. I mean, that's that's a lot of scenarios, and. Uh, just the whole the whole setup of the book is fantastic. So let's let's go through this. So I, I feel like I'm in class again. You know, what do you think the first thing is we're going to see in this? What is this book? Yeah, it's the same again. In case you're drunk and you pick it up, what is this book? Well, it's going to tell you. And then uh, we, we we the book starts off with a lovely little section, basically called the Prelude to War. And the prelude to war explains the kind of background to the Second World War. It talks about things like the Spanish Civil War. It talks about the invention of tanks and 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 the kind of ideas of static warfare uh, that had um, you know had existed. We talk about the first mechanized warfare. Um, you know the British uh, theologians who who you know or uh, theorists who came up with the the concepts. And we talk about the Germans and what their thoughts were during the the war, um, you know, the, and and it's just a really nice, you know, quite a few pages of background as to what was going on prior to this. What, why was the early war as it was? Um, and we get that very quickly through this kind of background uh, to the early war, which is fantastic. The book is then divided up into sections, and, and it's all chronological. So we start off with uh, Full Weiss, uh, in my best German, which basically is the invasion of Poland in, in September of 1939. Uh, it gives you an introduction, goes through some scenarios, gives some special rules, looks at um, additional units for the Polish, okay, um, and gives you a theatre selector, um, I particularly like the fact that you get the Polish post office garrison. I mean, that's just fantastic. That sounds like a force that you really need to to collect and, and to build. Um, and of course, there's a lot of people are um, looking forward to. You get the Polish cavalry squadron and the Polish armored train platoon. Um, you also get the Black Brigade squadron. Um, and let's see if there's anything else. Um, and, and then a couple of German ones. So uh, a really nice little section on, on the invasion of Poland. Obviously not a particularly long campaign for the Germans or the Polish, um, but it is covered in this book and it gives you some options to fight um, and also gives you some options basically to kind of, if you wanted to do other battles in the Polish um, campaign, you could use these army selectors and, and the, the, the rules um, for those. Uh, we then move on to Operation uh, Vezerbung. I don't think I've pronounced that right at all. I'm sure somebody out there can correct me. But we're looking at the invasion of Denmark and Norway. And for me, Norway is kind of a, a bit of an underdog of a, a, a campaign. I, I I have read a little bit and I've, I've watched some documentaries on Pol uh, Norway. And it, it really strikes me as a... a sort of campaign that could be really fun to fight um uh, a really good campaign to play i i think having the, the british there um and and maybe some german alpine troops would be cool to throw in there um just just the whole feel of it you know with the uh the norway campaign being so 
it's not quite so straightforward. Um, I think they could be a really good one to play. Um, so going through, there's uh, there's a few different scenarios um, with additional units. There's even um, covers the a Danish army list, which is great uh, with with the theatre selectors. So if you are interested in your minor minor uh, countries and you maybe you fancy putting together a Danish army, um, that is possible with this book. Uh, I definitely think you could. Uh, do some conversions with some figures to probably make this, um, as I'm not sure there's any Danish figures out there. But um, yeah, absolutely great. Uh, and then we move on to possibly one of my favourite sections of the book, uh, Falgelb, which um, I've talked about in other videos. Um, the, the invasion of the Low Countries, so we're looking at um, Holland, Belgium. Okay, um, and again, we you know we're not let down. Fantastic pictures. Um, there's, uh, you know, we've even got uh, the idea of um, a campaign, you know. How could you score a campaign if you were playing your way through these scenarios? Um, and, and again, great ideas for scenarios. Um, look at probably about four scenarios per campaign. Um, and, and again, you know, we are not let down, um, you know, even even goes on and talks about some of the legends from different countries, you know, and Erwin Rommel is one, which is quite good because I'm actually planning to put Rommel into my battle uh, for the uh, Oklahoma City show. So I, I'm definitely going to take, you know, some of these into consideration. The fact that he is 180 points as a veteran uh, commander um, is pretty cool. Uh, and he's got some special rules. I mean, Rommel's morale bonus is plus four. Um, and, and that's huge. He's also an anti-tank specialist. Now, I have to say, I mean, looking at the, the, the tanks that the Belgians and the French are throwing out there and the British only have an armoured car, I don't think we're going to need um, any anti-tank specialists from Rommel, but um, it could be good all the same. Um, and it throws in some additional units for the, for the Belgians, for the French, for the Germans. Uh, gives you the theatre selectors, which we've come to expect. Um, and uh, we've got some British Army selectors as well, um, Panzers, Fauschermjäger. So that I mean that's really useful, and it goes specifically into uh, details like you know which Panzer units had which tanks and how many of those tanks. So you can really be quite historically accurate with this book. Um, and and for those who perhaps don't want to do a ton of research, who don't enjoy that part of the hobby, and, but want it to be historical, then this book actually really does help out with that. Uh, and finally, we fall. Uh, sorry, we fall. We we move on to Falrot or Falrout. Um, basically, it's the invasion of France. Uh, as I'll show you there. Always good to see uh, some sort of British victory, even though it obviously didn't end well. Um, and we we go right through. Um, you know the campaign in in this, um, even including the Maginot Line, um, and of course, uh, you know um, we've got the relief force, which. Uh, presumably covers a little bit about Dunkirk um, and and the great thing is they've even managed to throw the Italians into it um, we all know that or uh, most a lot of us know that you know the Italians weighed really until the Battle of France was pretty much over and then they sprung a, a small little attack in the south of France um, which I'm not actually sure how well they did in that campaign but um, there is a, a scenario for Italy attacking uh, and there's also another one called the road to Milan um, so a couple of uh, nice ones that would I think would be pretty cool to investigate, particularly if you've got an Italian force. Um, I'm I'm certainly looking forward one day to having an Italian force, and I think that could be quite uh, fun and just another way of playing playing the game. Um, again, more um, additional units, more theatre selectors, particularly the Dunkirk perimeter one that that could be useful. Um, and an Italian one, and then we move on to really, you know, kind of conclude the whole early war period. You know, is this victory? Could Germany have won the war from this point? Um, and 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 that's just, you know, just you know, there's a nice little page there. Could Germany have won the war? That's fantastic. And of course, the artwork um, by Peter Dennis again really makes this book um, a fantastic um, 
addition to the, the bolt action library. And finally, we've got some new scenario rules. Um, the armored train is explained um, with some great detailed drawings of various different armored trains, um, I guess from different countries. Yeah, Red Army, Wehrmacht, Polish. Okay. Um, we also look, touch on minefields and clearing minefields, um, which, which is always important. Overall, I would give this easily a 12 out of 10. This is just a fantastic book and really well worth picking up if you are an early war player. Uh, this has been long awaited for by me. Uh, when I first heard it was coming out, it went on the wish list straight away. Uh, absolutely fantastic and I uh, really look forward to getting my teeth into this a lot more. Uh, diving in depth, looking really specific and actually having a really good read through of this again uh, to... Um, to kind of grab an idea of the feel of it and to, to um, add elements of it into my game for Oklahoma City. So that's Germany Strikes. Um, fantastic. I highly recommend it, um, particularly to early war players, but to any bolt action players who perhaps have got a little bit, not tired or bored, but just fancy a little bit of a change. You know, variety is the spice of life, as they say. Uh, so if you used to late war and you want to change and try something different, uh, Germany Strikes is definitely for you. So uh, that, that that's really us for this week. Um, as always, if you have enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, um, please like, uh, comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, always keen to hear your your views and your um, your thoughts. Uh, I've had some great compliments this week on my videos, which I've really, um, really taken on board and encouraged me uh, even further to up my game and see if I can improve these videos um, more. So, uh, yeah, so if you, uh, as I say, if you like this, please subscribe to the channel and, and keep your eyes out for even more videos coming your way. On Saturday, we will be releasing the new series, Bolt Action Basics, or BAB, um, where we'll be going through from a, a new player's perspective as to what is Bolt Action, uh, how do we get set up, how do we start playing. We'll do some uh, battle reports in that, but we'll also play through some uh, some turns real-time in, in a small 500 point aside game. Um, so looking forward to that. Um, and uh, you guys have a great rest of the week, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, take care.